I'm Michael. And I'm Brock. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do a pose. Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Brooke. And this is Maker's Workshop. Today we're gonna make a set of nightstands. But not just any nightstands. These are gonna be like super nightstands. They're going to have built-in wireless charging, four USB ports, and an LED lit resin river. <laughs> Let's get started. We're going all the way from raw slab to finished furniture in this build. All right, you want chair? Yeah. So the first step was picking out some slabs. To start, I trimmed off the ends eyeballing the best angle to make the best use of the natural shape of the slab. So when I'm measuring a slab and trying to get a fairly square edge, I measure it from multiple points at the top and make the measurement marks across the length of it, width of it. Then I connect the dots to get a fairly to get an edge that is fairly square with the top edge. Otherwise, if I use my square reference edge, I'm not going to get anything near square to the other end. With the slabs trimmed down, it was time to pull the bark off using a nice sharp draw knife. Then, it was time to plane down each piece into a nice, flat, workable board. We had almost a dozen boards to do, and within two passes on the first slab, our wen planer completely jammed. So we moved over to the drum sander. But it just wasn't the same. So I went for a Home Depot run to buy a new, heftier yeah, plate. Yeah, I'll check you Why did we get more clamps? Because they're super oh nice. Oh my god! Why did... Fell right into your pocket. Yeah, they just <laughs> fell into the car. <laughs> and they were too heavy to take out, so I left them. Okay. Here's some glue. Woo. We went with the DeWalt planer. Yeah, we had it out of the box and working perfectly within five minutes. See if it kills us. You heard me. And we immediately threw it through the ringer, planing down all of our cherry slabs in no time. After that, we chose a slab with curvature that we liked for the Resin River tabletops, and I cut it into two strips on the table saw. I sanded down the live edge on the slab up to a 220 grit and then started constructing the mold. I lined a piece of thin plywood with sure tape so that the resin would release after it hardened. And then I started securing both sides of the cut slab in place, being sure to set them far enough apart so that the finished piece would have the right dimensions for the nightstand tabletops. I made sure that it was level and then started mixing up the resin. I'm using Total Boat Thick Set for this. For color, I used a mix of pearl pigment and a light blue kind of glittery pigment to get a pale silvery blue color. I was careful to add enough pigment that you wouldn't be able to see through the tabletop and into the top drawer, but not so much pigment that it wouldn't diffuse the light well. And then I poured the initial thin first layer of resin. Did you set a timer for me? She's just been stirring and eating <laughs> resin and... Nope. Thanks. You always count on you. <laughs> set timer for one minute. Okay, your timer is set for one minute. 
set timer. I think it's already been like enough time. It says there's 50 seconds left. We got a leak! Oh no! We've no. sprung a leak! It's not that big of one. It's a big one! It's He's a handled big it one, big so one. well. And I'm just like. <laughs> right, let's see. Gloves. This one's so big you, that I need gloves. Michael, you need to go a little faster. I'm going. Going. This like gives me maximum anxiety. Does it really? Yes. Oh. It's stuck to my glove. Stop it. Ah. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Why would you take other ones? Do you see the constant drip? Yeah, I do. That's a big problem. Let's just kind of take the shit out of it. Calm down, though. It's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal. Okay. <laughs> we need to fix it. I mean, the good news is this side looks good. I see no leakage over here. All right. Think so. I think it's all sealed. So just go, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, we definitely need more. Yeah, it's fine. I think we need possibly a whole nother batch. Yep. What? Oh my god. Oh. Okay, stop. Let's talk about this. With a light duty mold, like we used here, the right thing to do is to pour in that initial thin layer of resin and let it thicken up significantly, if not harden all the way. That way it can seep into and effectively plug up any potential holes, as well as that extra sturdiness before pouring in the bulk of the resin and adding that extra pressure to things. It was 2 a.m. and we were on a time crunch, so our dampened decision-making skills decided to throw caution to the wind, and it went well accordingly. We ended up at the shop until 4.30 a.m. that night cleaning up, and we were exhausted the day after, after the unintentional all-nighter. But the good news is that we were able to salvage our floors and tables, and we ended up with that thin layer of hardened resin I was just talking about, even though we should have just done it right the first time and avoided all this. Okay, good talk. So last night, as we were pouring these, the uh, resin decided it didn't like it in the mold, so it started pouring out, as you know, and so we came up with this weird solution. When the mold is wet with resin, nothing will stick to it, so it was a real problem. But we figured out that if we globbed a bunch of hot glue on these rubber gloves, that it would stay, and we made kind of a weird makeshift rubber gasket to keep it in and it is now good to go but the mold is looking pretty frankenstein-ish and the unmolding process will be a little bit interesting because there's a lot of extra things on here and i think there's a bunch of resin that's kind of like ballooned on the bottom of it so i don't know we'll see what we have to work with <laughs> The Frankenstein mold made for an interesting unmolding process. We pulled off as much as we could the conventional way, and then went at it by hand to pull off all the resin-covered clamps, rubber gloves, and hot glue. Uh, it has quite a bit of wobble in it, so we're just going to try to level it a little bit on a 
on a sled so that we can pass it through and remove as small an amount of material as possible to get us started. I'm not worrying about the level too, too much right now. I just want to keep the wobble out of it so that the two plates don't just follow the shape of that misshapen blob. Thank God we had such flat boards. Michael's just using canned air upside down because there's a freezing compound in there that'll dry the heart, that'll rather harden the hot glue quickly. We opted to use the drum sander for this, even though it's a lot slower than a planer would be for two reasons. One, at this point, it was too wide to fit in the planer. And even though we don't need a second reason because of that one, the second reason was that there was so much junk on it that we didn't want to gunk up the new planer and the drum sander has a disposable belt. When the time was right, Brooke removed the remaining plywood mold and I re-leveled it on the sled to make sure we were removing a nice even slice of material off the top so we could maintain as much thickness as possible. As you can see, the drum sander really enjoyed this. Then it was time to design the carve that would hold the wireless charging beneath the surface of the nightstand. I did a quick layout of the resin river to scale in Illustrator so I could ensure that the design stayed completely on the wood side of the panel and not on the transparent resin. I needed to be quite precise with the thickness I set for each of the circular pockets, otherwise the charging wouldn't work. I have the design for the CNC routed part of the tabletop all finished. It's just a matter of getting this over the router and running it. I'm going to do both tabletops as like two separate carves because generally speaking, when you're doing something large like this, it's a lot less risky to do it as two separate smaller things than as one big thing. At this point, the lower the risk, the better, because we've got this panel. We've come really far, and it would really stink if we had to, like, like, like start again. That would really stink. <laughs> I'm confident in my design, but just for good measure, I'm going to run an air carve where I calibrate the head of the router above the actual surface of my material so I can watch it go and just make sure everything looks right before carving it for real. I also had the CNC router carve out the outer border of the tabletop too. I usually don't set this thing to carve all the way through. I find it just as easy to trim things off with a bandsaw at the end as it is to deal with tabs. So I just do it this way. And then I sanded it up to a 220 grit and set it aside for now. We went back to the original batch of plain cherry and ran one edge of a few slabs through the joiner and then resawed them down the middle on the bandsaw. To get more surface area for the glue up, Brooke added a rabbit to the flat end of both sides of each bookend pair. Then she prepped the floors to leave all the glue ups overnight. We set each pair of panels onto parallel bar clamps and liberally glued them together.
After drying overnight, I popped them out of the clamps. With a clear idea of raw material, we could sketch out a design with real dimensions. I'm just gonna take each one of these panels and I'm going to run one side down the table saw to give us one flat registration edge. And then we can see what we're actually gonna to have to work with as far as size goes. So we're gonna mark the side of the panel with a straight line that has the least amount to remove, the least wavy edge. And then we're going to just eyeball it through the table saw to get that side as straight as possible and go from there. All right, so now that we have one mostly straight edge, I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do one square edge on the bottom that we can then measure everything else off of. Now that we have these two sides roughly squared out, we're gonna go ahead and use those as registration points and we're going to cut this panel about an inch and a half bigger than we want our final dimension to be so that we still have some wiggle room. But right now we're just bringing the size down so it's a little bit more to scale so that when we run it through the drum sander here, we won't lose our thickness. From here, I could get a nice square cut on the final edge. And then it was time to drum sand each panel flat. I sketched with pencil on both sides of each panel. It creates an easy visual, so you know when you've drum sanded each side completely flat. It's also of note here that I did all the panels at the same time in an assembly line to ensure that they were all the same thickness once finished. I used Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy to fill in any spots that needed it after this and allowed that to harden overnight before sanding each spot down the next morning with a random orbital sander. From here, using the known flat edges on each panel, we could cut the panels into our final dimensions. We saved a section of a plain cherry slab and took a moment to cut it into one inch strips. These strips are going to be the supports for the drawer slides and structure of the nightstands. I started with two side pieces and sketched where I wanted them to be. I clamped them into place and measured exactly how long my horizontal pieces needed to be. And then I cut a bunch.
Using my pencil marks, we glued everything precisely into place. For the horizontal pieces, where we didn't have clamps to reach, we used a combination of CA glue and wood glue. The CA glue dries instantly and can serve as a clamp. To secure my corners, since there was an offset in the thickness of the board, I 3D modeled a set of custom brackets and 3D printed them on 100% infill in black PLA filament. These fit perfectly onto the cherry I had cut for the face of the nightstands as dividers between each drawer. I then screwed everything into place. From here, the back panel of the nightstand easily glued into place, fitting snugly into a ledge we measured when placing the interior brace pieces. Then I used corner clamps and let the stands dry overnight. At this point, I sketched out dimensions for the drawer interiors. Michael quickly cut the sides from 3 quarter inch plywood. For the drawer bottoms, we used 1 quarter inch plywood. Using the router table, we added a quarter inch notch to the sideboards to ultimately slide the bottom into, as well as rabbits to each edge to create more surface area for the glue up. Next, I sanded everything well. Using painter's tape as clamps, I assembled three sides to the outer frame of each drawer and then slipped the drawer bottom into place. This is all going to get sanded again anyway, so I focused more on getting everything glued thoroughly than I did on being neat or tidy about it. Lastly, I locked it all into place by gluing the final piece of the outer frame. The next day, I removed the tape and then gave each drawer a final, thorough sand. Each one of these will be covered with a drawer face, but we still wanted them to have a soft feel. The outer frame to the nightstand is basically done, and the drawers are roughed out, but I did cut them larger than they need to be so that I can go back and refine them and get them pretty exact. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a little bit of a decorative bottom to it. And we're just gonna go with a simple half moon. And then we're gonna get the drawers cut down to the right size so that we can start putting this together. I sketched roughly where I wanted a half moon to sit visually and then made a stencil using chipboard and a bucket. I sketched my shape onto each side of the nightstand using the stencil and then cut it out with a jigsaw.
It gave a nice stylized touch. I also took this opportunity to double check that everything was nice and square before cutting the drawer faces down to size. Once I confirmed that they fit perfectly into place, I added a routed edge to each. I used the same router bit to soften the edges of the tabletop for visual continuity in the piece. It was now time to install the drawer slides. It's really not that hard to do. It just takes some focus. First, screw the slide on at just one point. Then, using a magnetic level for reference, pivot the drawer slide until it is level and add a second screw. After that, it'll sit nice and level as you add the rest of the screws in. We got all of our drawer slides into position, and then it was time to attach the drawers themselves. We used a similar level technique to keep everything lined up. And ultimately, if the drawers slide smoothly, it's good. Okay. We printed a couple of brackets to keep the electronics on the inside, and now we're just gonna take a little bit of a closer look at how they're gonna work, just because it's pretty tight in there, so you're not gonna be able to see it too much when we are doing it. First, I printed some brackets to hold the wireless charging firmly up to the roof of the nightstand so that it'll stay safely within range to charge a phone set on top. The largest part I printed will sit on top of the wireless charging station. It's shaped to hold the power pack and extra length of cords for the USB ports. Because we did not want to embed the LEDs into the resin pour, in case we ever don't want them or in case they ever break, we 3D modeled a basic pocket that will hold the LED strip sideways. We can cut these and mess around with their orientation to best fit the curve of each resin river for even lighting. The wireless charging slipped perfectly into the pockets I had routed out. To keep these snugly against the roof of their compartment, we added in that 3D printed bracket. Before we get too far into this, I'm just going to flip it over to verify that the electronic charging is indeed working. Confident that the electronics in the tabletops worked, we could add the finish. We went with Osmo. It's a favorite of ours. Its intended use is on floors, so it's nice and durable. However, it still has a soft and natural look. It leaves the wood looking like wood, which is best in my opinion on pieces that are already featuring an artificial pop in the form of a resin river like this. Best way to apply Osmo is by dipping a rag directly into the finish and saturating your wood. Immediately after applying, use a bone dry cloth to pull off every last drop of excess finish and then let it set. Multiple very thin coats is the best way to go to get a nice finish. Uh, you ended up using three coats on the outside of the nightstands. At this point, we finished the tabletops and all of the drawer faces. Each nightstand is also going to have four USB ports hiding in back. I designed a quick file to perfectly fit each square port and laser cut it in cherry to match. Then Michael cut out a window on the back of the nightstands to glue the square into. 
The drawer faces needed to be installed very precisely. Any slight crookedness would be obvious because of the design of the front. We went slowly and used a scrap of 1 8 inch plywood as a spacer between each drawer face. Then we popped a screw into each pilot hole to secure each drawer face perfectly into place. Then we cut one last strip of cherry to top off the set of three drawer faces and routed it to match everything else. We intentionally left this to cut at the end so that it could serve as the very last puzzle piece and be cut to fit perfectly. Then, the nightstand was ready to get its own few coats of Osmo. It was difficult to film, but the interior got two coats as well for the sake of durability. Then, I screwed the power holder onto the bottom side of the tabletops over where the wireless chargers were nestled. I also cut down and placed the LED brackets at this point and installed the lights. I then positioned the tabletop onto its base to make sure everything fit properly. I added pilot holes to the top rim using a power drill. And then did the same through the underside of the tabletop. Then I added a screw. This would have been a tight squeeze to start, but the added electronics made it even more tight. The LED lights for the Resin River have a remote to control their brightness. We thought this should be mounted to the outside of the nightstands, so we drilled a hole for the cord to go through. And then we snapped the USBs into place as well. As you can imagine, at this point, the interior was a mess of cords and no one likes that. So we tidied it up with zip ties to make sure to position the cords in a way that wouldn't interfere with the drawer slides or cast a shadow on the Resin River when it was lighting up. When we flipped it over, the exterior still looked sleek, which is exactly what we were going for. And at this point, it seemed wise to give our glowing river a test run before proceeding too far past the electronics. Next, we slipped all of the drawers into place. And if you haven't already caught on by now, we've been making a set of two nightstands. So everything we did in this video, we did times two to get a matching set of two that look the same. Installing the drawer hardware was the last finishing touch. I made another chipboard template to help line things up, drilled the holes, and screwed each handle into place. And that is how you build a stool. Okay. Don't forget to click subscribe. <laughs> See you next time. I'm Brooke. I'm Michael. And this is Maker's Workshop. Okay. I think we nailed it. <laughs>